National Educational Television presents African Writers of Today, a series of programs surveying the literary scene in contemporary Africa. Today we feature an interview with the Nigerian novelist Chinua Achebe. Mr. Achebe is author of the novels Things Fall Apart and No Longer at Ease. His third novel, Arrow of God, is soon to be published. Chinua Achebe will be interviewed by two fellow African writers, Mr. Wole Shoyinka, Nigerian poet and dramatist, and program host, Louis Nkosi, South African author, journalist, and broadcaster. This program was recorded in the Nigerian National Museum, Lagos. Now these little horned things are very interesting. Uh, every adult Igbo man had one, and uh, when he died it split into two, and one half is buried with him, and the other half is thrown away. It's called Ikenga. Oh yes, this is the um, cult of strength, That's of right. um, sort of virility. That's man, right. Man. That's right. That's right. Well, gentlemen, maybe we can sit down now and start with the interview. Are you all comfortable? Yes, or thank yes. you. Here at the Museum of Nigeria in Lagos, we are sitting with Chinua Achebe, uh, a man possessed of a startlingly original talent in writing. Chinua Achebe Du Yang has given the world two novels, Things Fall Apart, No Longer at Ease, and all critics seem to agree that Chinua Achebe uh, combines a simplicity in technique and a, a very complex technical uh, talent indeed. But maybe Wallace Swenka would like to add a few words of introduction. No, uh, I don't think I have uh, much more to add to um, what you said about Chino Achebe on the personal uh, level and all the other aspects. I, I just like to go straight into your work. And I'd like to take uh, as my point of reference uh, for a start, this last carving you showed me, the, uh, the carving of Ikenga. Now this represents, as you said, the spirit of uh, manhood, of strength, of, of, of real masculine energy um, in Igbo society. Now, um, in Things Fall Apart, Okonko seems to me to uh, represent the kind of figure in society who is acted upon from within by this uh, kind of strong uh, spiritual quality. Now I'd like to know from you whether uh, this is a conscious uh, derivative um, in the creation of this character, just or whether um, you know, the, the, just the sense of the character in society, his religion, his his beliefs. Um, well, not not consciously, uh, but the Okonkwo, as you said, uh, symbolizes, if you like, uh, strength and uh, aggressiveness. Now, these are some of the qualities that his people admire. And I wanted a character who uh, could be called representative of this particular group of people. And uh, you know, they admired a man of strength, a man who, uh, a man of wealth, uh, a man who had, uh, you know, a big compound with wives and uh, had many farms. That sort of thing. Yes. Now, this is a dangerous question, I know, but does it imply anything in your own personal attitude towards this society which places so much premium on what, after all, may be a kind of uh, the exhibitionist side of, you know, the masculine ego? Does it uh, imply something of your own attitude, the fact that Pokonko does by this very personal immersion in this, uh, you know, in, in this kind of value? that he heads for a fall. Yes, yes, yeah, yes, too. yes. I, I, th I think there is, a, there is a point there. There is the weakness of this particular um, society, I think, is a um, lack of adaptation, you see, uh, yeah. not being able to bend. Um, of course, I, I can't say that this now represents the Igbo people mm -hmm. today, but um, I think in his time, the strong men were those who did not bend, and I think this was, this was a, a fault 
in the in the culture itself. Yes, yes, Chinua, I, I'm more interest, interested in what some people have described as your deliberate uh, attempt to avoid uh, passing moral judgment on your characters. For instance, in the first novel that you wrote called Things Fall Apart, there is this absolute cruelty in which because the tribal society sanctions of the killing of a of a ward by by his protector that this man carries this out although he seems to have some kind of doubts he doesn't um, avoid doing so and um, the way you wrote that that passage uh, seemed to to imply that you 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 were not able to make any particular judgment on that action is, is, is this true or what? No, I don't, I, don't, no I don't think this is a fair assessment at all. You have to see the, the story as a whole. Um, this is what I was uh, saying to Wally earlier on, that um, this particular society perhaps believes too much in uh, manliness, you see. And this is part of it, and perhaps this is part of the reason why it crashed at the end, you see. And I don't think uh, a writer should point a moral lesson on every page. I, th I think the total effect at the end of the story is that uh, this is the way that things went, you see. I like my moral to be, uh, no, not to be as obvious as... as, as uh, yes, what I was uh, getting at was whether you had some kind of moral point of view. Yes, well, yes. Uh, taking the book as a whole. Yes, yes, I, I, I did. You see, I think that um, this particular society had its uh, good side, this is the poetry of the life, uh, the, the simplicity, if you like, uh, the communal way of uh, sharing in, in happiness and in sorrow and, and in work and all that. You see, it, it had all that. But it was also, it had art and, 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 and beauty, but it had this cruel side to it. You see, and it is this that I think that um, helped to, to bring down the, my, my hero. Well, for a moment I was going to, you know, when you began explaining uh, when he began sort of uh, expatiating on the on the values of this society i was going to say that this sounded dangerously like uh, the uh, philosophy of negritude or shall i say the uh, almost the myth of negritude a simple but um, i was relieved you mentioned an extra uh, dimension to it um, but if i may pick up something which uh, liz was saying uh, the whole question of style um, do you accept uh, the, the evaluation which has been placed on your style by some critics that uh, there is a kind of almost precise um, workmanship about it, that it's almost a kind of unrelieved uh, competence as opposed to genuine artistic inspiration, uh, if you like, but... Um, I, well, what, how do you well, react to this? Kind? How do you react to this sort of? Uh, don't expect me to, to, to accept that. But um, uh, no, as a matter of fact, I don't think um, one could call my uh, my method um, describe my method in, in those terms because I don't particularly spend a lot of time on on polishing. As a matter of fact, things fall apart was written straight uh, without any kind of draft. Um, so I don't. I wouldn't. I would say yes, no. If I may be permitted to ask you another question, Chinway, um, as a South African, I'm very much conscious of uh, the fact that there seems to be some kind of continuity um, between uh, the modern day society in Nigeria, from which I suppose you spring, and, and the old uh, traditional society. Um, what were the formative influences upon your life? How were you able to draw such a, an accurate picture of the old traditional society? Um, how are these influences passed on? Yes, well, I think I, I, I belong to a very fortunate generation in this, in this respect, um, that the old hadn't been completely disorganized you see, when I was growing up. I think it's, the disorganization has gone a, a stage further now. But when I was growing up, um, it was easy, uh, especially if you lived in a village, to see, um, if not in whole, at least in part, you see, the, these old uh, ways of life, you see. If you, I was particularly interested in listening to the way old people talked, you see, and uh, 
uh, this is the kind of, of, of background, you see. And the festivals, of course, were still um, observed, maybe not in the same um, force, but, but, but they were still there. So this, this, this didn't really uh, entail a, de a deliberate kind of research of the adult artist into this life. Uh, no, this no, no. Something you had. No, 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 I didn't do any research at all. Mm -hmm. Chinua, uh, when you were going to uh, the University College of Ibadan and you switched off, off from uh, a course in medicine uh, to, to literature, did you find any uh, 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 precursors um, in the, in the uh, West African novel, English uh, uh, people who have written a novel about your society, which you could use as a model, or did you find nothing at all that was useful to you? Well, actually, there, there wasn't very much when I was um, when I was at college. Um, Joyce Kerry had written his uh, some of his books, uh, if I may say so. Uh, perhaps he was um, he helped to, to to inspire me, but not in the usual way. I was really angry with with his uh, book, Mr. Johnson which was set in Nigeria. See, I, I, I happened to read this, I think, in my second year. And um, I, I said to myself, now this, this is absurd. And if somebody with, without uh, knowledge, without any inside knowledge of the people he's trying to describe, uh, can get away with it, uh, I'll, I'll start to try my hand at it. Well, you mentioned Mr. Johnson. Um, there was, uh, your, this is the second book now, uh, No Longer a Tease. Uh, the hero of that book, he uh, struck me as, in, in some way, a rather effete um, kind of character. Um, you do not see um, any, any kind of uh, equation at all between him, between his particular weaknesses. I refer especially to his kind of relationship with his European boss. You do not see any similarity at all between this uh, and Mr. Johnson. No, I don't, um, because I think, I think Mr. to me, Mr. Johnson doesn't live at all. I mean, he's, um, he's merely, he's a caricature. No, precisely. I know Mr. Johnson is a caricature, yes. but then uh, caricature really is something you exaggerate. You do exaggerate some kind of uh, positive, you know, uh, factual element. Now, you do not think that uh, this hero, um, uh, he does uh, demonstrate some of these um, exaggerated qualities in Mr. Johnson. Again, I go back to his relationship with his boss in the office. The kind of uh, um, the kind of peculiar uh, deference which he had towards him. His kind of tolerance of this boss, which is you know exaggerated many many more. Do you, do you? Yes. Well, I, do, I don't think you see um, if you, if you go back to that book, you'll see that he actually didn't have much respect for his boss, but. Uh, his nature was such that he was able to dismiss him um, as an example of this or that, you see. Uh, there, there was, in fact, a passage where he was thinking of the, of the greens. This is his boss. Yeah. The greens of this generation, you see, they, they are tragedy. No, no, I think his problem was that he was perhaps too um, civilized yeah. see, to, 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 to shout. Mm. And, 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 and this might be what you are referring to. But yes. I don't think it's the same thing as, uh, as Mr. Johnson. Mm. Perhaps even a caricature is not a correct way. Mm. Perhaps it's, it's simply a puppet. Yeah, a complete travesty yes, of, yes. Of, of, the, of the situation. Chinua, uh, uh, Professor Abrahams in his book, The Mind of Africa, uh, selects you as one of the most original or the more African of all the African novelists that he has read in English-speaking Africa. I was just wondering whether y you found that there was something to be done with this alien form, as I suspect the, the novel is, whether y you found that you, you, you could experiment with the form, uh, not just with the content. Is there a room to turn around in, the, in this alien form at all? Yes, well, I, th I think I, the, 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 the novel form suits me extremely well just now. Um, what I, I, I haven't read uh, Dr. Abraham's book, um, but I think I can regard myself, I think, with, with justice as, as very much an African writer. Um, I think I'm basically an ancestor worshipper, if, 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 if you like. Not in the same sense as my grandfather uh, would probably do it, you know, pouring out palm wine on the floor. 
for the ancestors. Uh, but you know, with me it takes the form of celebration, and I feel a certain uh, compulsion to do this. It's not because I want. I think this would appeal to, to listeners, it, uh, to, 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 to to my readers. I feel that this is something that has to be do uh, has to be done before I, I move on to the contemporary scene. And in fact, the reason why um, my third book goes back again to, to to the past, not as remote as the first, is that I have come to think that my first book is no, is no longer adequate. I've learned a lot more about this particular um, people, mm. you know, my ancestors. But sorry to move to a, a more general uh, topic. Do you agree with um, with what Lewis said about the, the novel being an alien uh, form? Um, I, I, I have in mind when I say this uh, the kind of uh, the, the kind of idiom of storytelling which. Um, is very prevalent in the East, even much more than the West, whereby a story can be uh, recited with action, with uh, demonstration, with dances, with, um, you know, with all the... Yes, even yes. with makeup for days, night yes, after yes. night. Now, I mean, isn't this really a, quest a difference of uh, material? One yes, 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 telling the story as you say, yeah. but uh, it's a question of writing it down yeah. and... Uh, Using and, uh, a different yes, language also. Yes. yes, well, I don't want to make two types a distinction between the, the storytelling tradition in Africa and the, and the European forms of, of, of novel. Um, but I do feel that, um, that uh, the European novel has a, a certain background, a bourgeois uh, a background and, and, and the the individual authorship is, is another prominent feature of it. And of course the fact that it can be enjoyed by a single person, by himself, without sort of um, being gathered together with, with lots of other people. But no matter, I, I want to pass on to, to another question I'd like to put to you, and it's a, a more sociological question. I'll, I'm interested in just how much uh, social power uh, a novelist in Nigeria has, how much influence uh, he has with his society, or, or is the society completely indifferent to him? Um. Yeah, well, uh, the novel is, is, uh, is uh, comparatively young here. It's, it's only about 10 years old. And um, it would be impossible to say uh, precisely what kind of influence we are going to have. All I can say is that it is, uh, it is growing. Uh, the, the, I think the, the, my books, for instance, uh, have done ex extremely well in Nigeria and in other parts of Africa. And uh, I think the same goes with, with the other novelists here. Uh, whether you can call this uh, social influence, I, I, no, I, I think probably we ought to wait some years to see. Yes, but I'm interested because there has already been a, a definite reaction from, say, the federal government of Nigeria to, to uh, Cyprian Equence's novel, which was uh, about being formed. And, and, and they banned this. And they said it shouldn't be done because it doesn't accurately reflect the, uh, the, the, the life of Nigeria. Is, uh, are the politicians beginning to react to some kind of social criticism contained in, in, in the, the younger literature of Nigeria? Well, uh, I can only quote from my own experience, and I haven't, I haven't come up against any obstruction uh, like, the, uh, like what, uh, the, the, the example you've given. Um, Maybe I have not, may, maybe when I move into the present in a, in a sort of write a political novel, that would be the time to test. Uh, but all I can say is that I haven't uh, yet come up against any kind of opposition. And in any case, I think politicians behave pretty much the same uh, all over the world. Um, the basic suspicions, even um, Cyprian Equence's book, which you refer to, for instance, is not really a piece of um, um, social criticism. Uh, yeah, I think it is. It's just this problem of politicians getting nervous about a false image being presented without ever understanding uh, the whole business of uh, creative writing and cannot understand it if a prostitute is written about in the book. It isn't a kind of treatise on uh, sociology. You know, sociology. But uh, I, I would like to make an abrupt uh, transition here. Um, I know you were in the States uh, very recently and uh, I'd like to know if you met any of the American 
novelists, particularly the Negro novelists and writers, maybe there's something you'd like to say Yes, about. yes, I did indeed. In fact, that, that, that was the very uh, purpose of my visit. Um, I did meet with uh, the, the Harlem group of writers, you know, uh, Langston Hughes and John Killens and, uh, and the whole lot of younger ones. Um, I didn't meet uh, Baldwin, unfortunately, because he was tied up with other uh, duties. Yeah. Um, I also met quite a few uh, white writers, you know, uh, not, not just novelists. I met Arthur Miller, the, the, the dramatist. Um, but perhaps what I got most was a kind of um, a closer relationship with the, with the uh, literary pulse in America. I think I'm now a lot more interested in what is being written there than I was before. Did you notice any similarity or problems? For instance, uh, I would like to know if you felt that uh, they were particularly, the Negro writers were particularly interested in your work because of this um, interest of yours and uh, your orientation um, around the uh, traditional um, African um, way of life and yes. philosophies, did you? Yes, uh, yes, kind of yes, yes, very yeah. much so. Uh, in fact, I remember now um, one uh, Negro writer who autographed a book of hers uh, with the words, uh, something to this effect, to Achebe, who depicted so beautifully the culture that might have been mine. This is, this is the kind of, of a feeling I think they have. Chinua, the European critics, if I may say, have been most kind um, to your novels, at least in their appreciation and, the, and, and acceptance of them. But you have been the most vicious critic of the European critics. <laughs> Why is this so? What, what do you find so objectionable in their approach to African literature? Well, I'm surprised to hear you say that I'm the most vicious of <laughs> critic of the critics. No, I don't, I don't object to critics at all. Um, what I do object to is uh, people preaching from a position of, of ignorance. And, uh, and this you find quite a lot in, in the criticisms that are, that are made of our work. Even, um, as I said before, even when they are praising you, you find that this is not really for the right reasons at all. Of um, course, I'm not saying that they should shut up, but uh, see, I hate um, any kind of cultural or literary popes, you see, being set up, people who can uh, pontificate on the real African literature, the real, this, you see, and then you, you, you find a lot about words like real or true or valid, you see, and these things, yeah. yes, and these words, I think, are, are almost meaningless in the context. Uh, how do you react to uh, the critic who um, lumped you, Cipriana uh, Quincy, and Honora and Zeku together as an unbeatable treble choice. Now you know, <laughs> how do you react personally to this as a writer? Uh, well, that particular critic, I think I know who you mean. I, I don't care particularly for him. Um, of course, he's, he's uh, welcome to his opinion about, about, being, about uh, being on unbeatable. Mm. I mean, I, I couldn't quarrel with that. <laughs> um, but I don't care for him as a critic. Yeah, but if, if I just pursue this a bit further, he, he also makes a statement on which I think he might uh, like to comment, uh, talking I think about, I forgot whose book now, he, he says, and he also writes the kind of uh, books which his readers, his African his people like to read, uh, a novel with a moral at the end. Now you talked earlier about one of your novels uh, possessing some kind of moral, but um, do you make a distinction yes, yes, between it, the way he yes, uses it, this? Uh, yes, I'm and sure what it means is the kind of moral which you have in stories for children, you see, and the moral of this story is that the man who behaves this way has this kind of reward. I mean, that obviously is, is, not, is not the right approach, you see, for, for, for a novelist. Chinua, you have said something about the latest novel you have written uh, having progressed um, beyond the two books that you, you, you worked on uh, the first time. Could you indicate, perhaps, in what direction you think you've, you've made this advance, or uh, technically, or, or um, otherwise? Well, uh, it would be difficult to, to describe the technical uh, superiorities. I don't know. Is there a difference in subject matter? Yes, yes, I, uh, there is definitely. I'm, 
handling a whole lot of more complex um, themes, you see, like the relationship between a god and his priest, you see. Um, the, the, my chief character in this novel is, is, is a village priest, not a Christian priest, you see, the, in the traditional African religion. And um, I, I'm interested in this whole question of uh, who decides what shall be the, the, the wish of the god, you see. And, you know, that, 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 that kind of, of situation. And I've also tried to um, develop my treatment of character. Um, whether I succeed or not, uh, still to, to be seen, you see. But I think that I have uh, progressed in that direction. Yes, uh, and, and the other question, of course, uh, is the more general one, which uh, bothers a lot of people, and it has to do with the audience. Um, do you find that you're beginning to develop uh, an indigenous audience in Nigeria uh, so that you, you can rely less on metropolitan audiences or uh, to put it in another form so that you, you can become less conscious of the demands of, of, uh, of European audiences? Yes, yes, I, th I think you're right. Although I must say that um, I don't think I was consciously uh, working with an audience in my, in my first book. In fact, I remember being surprised when the first person who read it said, who did you have in mind, you see? Now, that doesn't mean I didn't have somebody in mind, but I wasn't thinking of it primarily. Um, the second time, of course, uh, ha this thought having been put into my mind, I, was, I found myself thinking about it. But now I, I feel I don't have to, 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 to worry over much uh, about who understands what I'm saying or who doesn't. I think that there will always be enough people interested in, in a good story. Well, <laughs> perhaps this is um, just as good a time uh, to stop this gentleman. We're greatly privileged to have met Chinwa Achebe at the Museum of Nigeria, surrounded as we are by the masks and the brooding spirit, which is um, about the same kind of thing that broods in the novels by Chinwa Achebe, the past. Is, is, is very much there. Chinua Achebe, all critics agree, has great promise and promises to give us some of the best things that have been produced in African literature. You have just seen and heard another broadcast in the series African Writers of Today. This series is devoted to the literary scene in contemporary Africa. The personality on today's program, Chinua Achebe, Nigerian novelist, author of Things Fall Apart, No Longer at Ease. His third novel, Arrow of God, is soon to be published. Chinua Achebe was interviewed by Wole Shoyinka, Nigerian poet and dramatist, and series host Louis Nkosi, South African author, journalist, and broadcaster.